Guys, I have two of the best sets of cameras to ever exist on a smartphone, the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Google Pixel 8 Pro. In this video, we're going to look at a whole bunch of photos from both devices, some videos at the end of this as well. Compare, contrast, and try to determine for you which camera setup takes the better photos. Let's turn our attention to this album that I have put together. And yes, we are, like I said, going to go through all of these. And I'm going to point out things that I see, and hopefully you can use this data to make your own informed decision. With all of these, it will be the Pixel 8 Pro followed by the S23 Ultra. That is the order that they will be shown in. I'll try my best to call them out as we go through, but just keep in mind, Pixel 8 Pro, then S23 Ultra. So when we look at these two pictures, to me, the first thing that stands out between the 8 Pro and the S23 Ultra is the level of brightness and the amount of grain that I am actually seeing. If we go back to the S23 Ultra photo and we zoom in down here, you can see there's a lot of noise, actually quite a bit more noise than I was expecting. Now, of course, all of these shots were taken on the default standard settings. Unless I say otherwise, assume that is always the case. You pull the phone out of your pocket, you take the picture, this is the end result. Now, I know some people are immediately going to say, oh, you should use Pro Mode and change the ISO. There are too many variables to cover when I do that. I'm never going to make everybody happy, so this is the only way to do these videos. Shooting in auto, so just keep that in mind as we go forward. Like I was saying, S23 Ultra looks a little bit dimmer, and there's definitely some more grain down here in the darker areas when compared to the Pixel 8 Pro. I would say that the level of depth of field is very similar. Notice the text back here on this watch box, very, very similar. Colors are probably a little bit more saturated for the Galaxy phone. That will be a trend going forward. To me, I prefer the brighter, cleaner look of the Pixel photo here. Photo number two is an interesting one, Pixel 8 Pro S23 Ultra. The S23 has so much more contrast to me than the Pixel 8 Pro does. In fact, this navy blue wall almost takes on like a, almost a black hue on this side here. Looking down at the wood on my Martin guitar, again, the color just looks a little bit too dark to me. It's almost got like a crunchy, over sharpened look to it as well. If we zoom in here, we do have some really, really good detail being maintained. You can actually read the label on the inside of this guitar very easily. If we go over to the Pixel, it is a fairly similar state of affairs though. They're both handling the lamp pretty well in terms of the exposure. This is always a fun test for me. This is gonna come down to personal preference like a lot of these, but to me, the Samsung just has kind of a moodier look, right? Like if you're into that, if you're into that moodier, more contrasted, more saturated, warmer color tones versus the Pixel 8 Pro, you're gonna like it a lot. Stepping outside, we're gonna try to compare every lens, and all of the standard zoom levels. So this is the Pixel 8 Pro on the wide angle lens. And you can see here, colors are a little bit washed out in general. They're not super, super punchy. If we zoom in, you can see that the details are okay. Definitely getting some noise, some grain in these darker areas. If we go to the S23 Ultra, things are definitely a bit darker and definitely more saturated. I think we can see similar levels of grain noise in these darker areas. Again, I will say that the Pixel is a slightly wider angle, not by a lot, but if you look over here at this fence post and look at these fence posts, you'll see you're actually zoomed in just a little bit more with the Galaxy phone, but not a huge amount personally. I think that overall the Galaxy device has the more pleasing photo. It's got that HDR kind of look to it. I like how punchy the colors are. It just grabs my eye more. This looks a little bit too bright and almost washed out. I mean, I guess the sky was about that color blue. This is probably too blue to actually be real. But I don't know, just my opinion, I like this picture better. If we go to the One X, things are kind of similar, honestly, as far as the pixel goes in terms of color tone to that wide angle. This is a very overcast day, so things kind of have this white look to them. If we zoom in here, you don't see a ton of noise and grain. There's a little bit right in there, but it's definitely improved over the ultra wide. You can see some good detail 
in this shot as well. Looking up at this tree that was actually what we were focusing on. Things are looking good. Very, very natural colors. This is very accurate to what my eye was seeing. With the S23 Ultra, you've got that higher HDR look. You've got the darker darks, the more colorful colors. That is the S23 look for sure. If we zoom in over here, I think the level of noise is, again, maybe just a little bit higher. Not a huge difference, but I think there is a little bit more details are very similar. Again, guys, this is going to come down a lot to point of preference. Do you want something that's fairly natural, fairly realistic, or a little bit more moody, a little bit more stylized? Jumping to 2X, which is a preset on the Pixel 8 Pro, and keep in mind this is a digital zoom on that Pixel 8 Pro. If we zoom in here on this tree, the details are okay, okay? It's not going to be an optical zoom, so we're going to get what we're going to get. It's not incredible, but it's definitely serviceable. On the S23 Ultra, it feels like the colors got cranked up to 11. I don't know what happened here, but man, those colors are just vibrant. And again, I kind of like those colors, so a lot of the time for me, I love the way the S23 Ultra looks. Jumping to 3X, again, this is a digital zoom for the Pixel 8 Pro. If we zoom in, not a lot's changed. The color temperature is very similar. I think it does a pretty respectable job in terms of retaining detail, even though this is a digital zoom. It's an optical zoom for the S23 Ultra, and you can see that, I think, pretty clearly. This has more detail. It's just a better looking shot in terms of those details. And again, colors are looking wild. Look at these leaves up here versus the leaves here. And now if we go to 5X, this is an optical zoom for the Pixel 8 Pro, which means we should be looking much, much better. And if we zoom in, I think that you're gonna see that is exactly what's happening. This has some really nice detail. You can see individual leaves and everything. This looks very, very good to me. And I actually think that the colors look a little bit punchier, a little bit more saturated. So interestingly enough, going from a digital zoom to this optical zoom, the colors kind of came back a little bit. And if we're on the S23 Ultra, this is using their 3X lens and then a hybrid zoom the rest of the way. And it does a pretty admirable job here as this clears up. It looks decent, okay? I'm not gonna tell you it looks as good as the Pixel does here because it just doesn't. It's a hybrid zoom, it's not going to. But I think it does a pretty okay job. Definitely less detail though. Now we're gonna go to a 10X zoom, okay? So this is the 5X optical on the Pixel 8 Pro, hybrid zoomed up the rest of the way. And you're definitely beginning to tell. Similarly to what we just looked at with the 5X, the details are beginning to suffer a decent amount. Is it usable? Could you still do this? Yeah, I think you could and still be okay with it. But on the S23 Ultra, it's absolutely going to demolish it because it has a 10X optical zoom. The details are just far more impressive. And need I say it for the umpteenth time, the colors are just ridiculous. The colors are so over the top. This is not realistic at all. This is what this tree looks like, but this might be more fun for you. This might be the picture you enjoy more. Let's take a look at portrait mode, and we're using my boy Rutherford here as the subject for these photos. The Pixel 8 Pro, I think, does a pretty good job. I like how the blur, the depth of field is looking here. I think it looks fairly natural. The colors, again, looking fairly natural on the S23 Ultra. We're gonna go a little ham on these colors once again. We're punching this stuff up. Guys, it's fall, okay? He's not this shade of red. He's more like this. But again, maybe you like that HDR. Maybe you like those punchy colors. They both do a great job in regard to the blur. Notice his ears a little bit out of focus, right? He was moving a little bit. And that prototypical Samsung motion blur is in effect. No problems here. You can see when I took his picture, he pulled his ear back and it blurred it. Using the selfie camera on the Pixel 8 Pro, I think this looks very, very good. We, as always, have some issues with my hair being blurred incorrectly, but I think it's pretty darn tack sharp. I like the way that the colors look. When it sees a face, it gets very high HDR look. Kind of almost reminds you of a slightly desaturated Samsung photo. With the Samsung photo, you can see again, same sorts of issues with the uh, blur around the hair. That's just always gonna happen. Detail is very similar, just more saturated, okay? I think both of these do a great job with these selfie portraits. Just one has a bit punchier colors than the other. Using the primary camera, I think we also look pretty good. Again, same problems, 
you're always going to have with the hair being cut out. Details are really, really strong. You can see individual pores on my face. Colors look a little bit more saturated here for some reason. It looks a little bit punchier on the Samsung though. It's brighter. It's definitely more saturated. We'll zoom in again. There was a strand of hair here that got missed. Details are really, really similar. This is more than any other set of pictures in this video going to come down to your personal preference. Now we mentioned motion blur a little bit ago. So what I did is I took some pictures of Rose playing with her favorite toy, this ball, and we're gonna go through, we're gonna look and see which one actually managed to capture her in focus best. Again, right now, this is with default settings. We're gonna change the setting on the Samsung device here in a little bit, but for right now, default auto settings. You can see here, this is in pretty good focus. The ball's in the air. She's got one eye closed, which is really funny. But this is pretty decent, right? Let's jump over to the Samsung photo. We'll zoom in. One eye closed here as well. But as you can see, we're out of focus in a lot of ways. In fact, everything's out of focus. So I was probably moving a little bit, but doesn't look great. Let's go to another photo again with the Pixel 8 Pro. The ball's moving very quickly now, and it's definitely out of focus. But she's pretty close to in focus over on the Samsung device. She's definitely out of focus. The ball's much more out of focus. So no shocker here, the Samsung is not handling motion quite as well. And moving inside to a little bit worse light, we're using the dog wagging the tail test. Look at the Pixel 8 Pro here. I need a new chair. And look at the S23 Ultra here. There's much more motion blur on the tail. These were taken at, at the exact same time. I hit the shutter, same time. These were the results, so nothing really surprising here. Now there is a setting on the S23 Ultra that you can change that is supposed to try to aid with this motion blur. If you go into your settings, it's actually called Advanced Intelligence Options, and maybe you can see here that I changed it to minimum here for this last test. Take pictures as fast as possible, so that's supposed to help with this, and well, let's see if it did. So there's Rutherford sitting there again, and I told him we were gonna go get a treat, and I took a picture at the exact moment that he moved with both devices. This is the Pixel 8 Pro, and boy, he tried to shoot up off of his butt to run into the other room. Face did blur. Here is the S23 Ultra. It blurred a lot more. And you can also see that just me moving slightly blurred again. So like, I was having that problem pretty consistently. I don't think I really need to see any more than that. For whatever reason, the S23 Ultra just has problems with motion blur and the Pixel 8 Pro doesn't really have the same sorts of problems. All right, so I turned off the lights here in the studio, most of them enough to trigger night mode. And here was the result I got on the Pixel 8 Pro. I like this quite a bit. It's got that blue light going on. It's a fairly moody looking photo. Details are still pretty good if we go to the S23 Ultra. Definitely a much, much warmer looking photo, but I think it did really well too. I like both of these a lot. You can see maybe even better detail there. Can I go back to that pixel photo? Am I crazy? Or did the detail actually look better? for? It absolutely looked better for Samsung. So you could call this a win for Samsung, and if you like the colors, it's a big win for Samsung. Stepping into another room, this room was very, very dark. Night mode maxed itself out, and as you can see, I mean, it doesn't look great, right? You can still see some decent detail, though. It's a passable photo considering how dark that room was. With the S23 Ultra, I think it looks worse, okay? I think it kind of got a weird pinkish hue to it for some reason, and the details definitely look a bit worse. So in extreme low light, I think I'm leaning towards the Pixel 8 Pro. One more low light photo that was again, fairly dark, turned off all the lights in this room, even my LEDs back there. The only light was coming through, bleeding through a curtain. And you'd probably never really know. If I zoom in here, you can see pretty clearly that I do need to dust. We are losing a lot of detail, right? Like it's not, you know, actual magic. I think it does a good job, but you're definitely losing some detail. On the S23 Ultra though, we're losing more detail. I think more problems with motion blur, just having to hold perfectly still as it counts down for, you know, whatever it was, three seconds to take this photo. It does a good job, but the Pixel just does it better. Here's a shot taken with the macro mode. If you get up really close to something, it will switch to that macro mode. The Pixel 8 Pro did a pretty good job. Did get a little bit of motion blur here and definitely a lot of noise and a lot of grain. It was a little bit dark up in this area. And you can tell, I think it does a pretty decent job though with the Galaxy though. This is just unequivocally better. I like the depth of field. I like the color. There's a lot less grain. Macro mode is to me 
a big win for the S23 Ultra. While we're talking about macro mode, what about using pro mode to do my favorite thing with pro mode, and that is to take macro photos. Of course, the Pixel 8 Pro now does have a pro mode. You can do your manual focus with focus peaking. It works very, very well, and you can see here that, man, this does a good job. My methodology here is to go to a 2x zoom and then use my manual focus to do my own sort of macro photos that keep that depth of field. They use the bigger sensor. I think they look better than using the automatic macro mode. S23 Ultra does it really, really well. Also, warmer, punchier colors. I think both of these do a pretty darn good job of this. If we go to the next photo of this rose, exact same thing going on, really, really nice details. You're able to use that focus peaking to get all this stuff really, really nice and focused. Love the soft focus in the background. I've said the word focus 87 times in the last three seconds. If we go to the S23 Ultra, I like it a little bit better, right? There's just something about it that gives it a different vibe that I, I just like a little bit better. I'm not exactly sure what it is, Maybe you disagree. They both look good though. All right, both of these videos are being shot 4K 30 FPS with the standard stabilization mode. Let me know what you think about the details, the color, the sound of my voice, the sound of the crows you're probably also hearing. And now using the super steady mode on both while at a light jog. Which one looks more stable to you? Now, this next part is not explicitly about the camera, the photography, but I did want to touch on it really quickly. So the Pixel 8 Pro can do some really crazy things with its photo app, and any opportunity I can get to talk about it, I'm probably going to take it and talk about it. So let's open up this photo here, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the Magic Editor to kind of demonstrate some of the wild stuff that this thing can do. And we'll look and see kind of what Samsung can do as well, because they can do something kind of similar, just not quite as advanced. So we're going to try to uh, basically take Rose here and we're going to move her over here and we're going to make her a little bit bigger because she's, you know, closer to the front of the shot. And we're going to hit that little arrow to generate this. What this is gonna do is it's going to use generative AI to fill in the space that we just left behind by moving her. And we'll see how this looks. Typically, Magic Eraser is pretty darn incredible. So if we zoom in where she was, you can see that it kind of tried to generate what would have been underneath her. There's a little bit of a weird shadow left behind. Let's see the other versions of this at Create Yag. Yeah, it, it, did, it made an owl. <laughs> so it looks like the first one is definitely going to be the most correct one. In fact, let me show you one more example of Magic Editor that I posted online the other day that just broke my brain. Something else I want to show you is this shot, which shouldn't look weird to you at all. It should look perfectly normal, but in fact, some AI stuff happened here too. I was taking this picture, and of course, Rose was moving around. Jesse was trying to hold on to her. So there was not a shot in existence that had them both looking at me. Well, what I did is I went to the shot where Rose was looking at me. I took several shots, and then I used a feature that is in this Photos app as well called Best take or best shot, I forget what it's called. But anyways, it looks at that burst of photos and it allowed me to automatically take Jesse's face where in this picture was blurred and looking strange and swap it out with one of the other shots where she was looking forward and smiling, but Rose wasn't. It allowed me to combine the two to get this picture. Again, this was edited with AI. This is a different face on this photo, but it's going to be really hard to pick that out. Maybe you can see that there's some portrait blur stuff weird going on down there with her hair, but unless I point that stuff out to you, you're not going to know. The Pixel 8 Pro takes great photos, but the editing capabilities are just next level. If we go into the gallery app of the Samsung device, you can do some interesting things as well. 
One cool thing, we should be able to long press on her and pop her out. And what we can do with that is to save it as a sticker or save it as an image. So it'll have no background, just her popped out of it. But you can't move her and have AI fill in where she was. They do have something akin to an eraser though, which is right here. And if we again, click on her, we should be able to erase this. And that did a decent job. I think it did okay. You can see it looks a bit blurrier than maybe it did with what Google came up with because it's more just sort of smudging things. It's not like doing an AI generative fill. And of course, both of these devices have additional features. I'm not gonna go over all of them. I just wanted to kind of point that out. The, the Pixel just has AI smarts that nobody else can match. So guys, there you go. 20 minutes of comparisons between the S23 Ultra and Pixel 8 Pro cameras in several different settings. I think overall, no huge surprises. I am very impressed by both of these. You're not gonna go wrong with either, but if you want that post photography experience, those incredible editing capabilities, Pixel 8 Pro is gonna be really, really hard to pass up on for someone like me right now. The only real surprise I saw was that the super stable mode on the Pixel 8 Pro looked very strange, and I'm not exactly sure why. It did not look good to me at all in that video section. Other than that, I think they are very, very evenly matched. They kind of trade blows for the most part, but again, the AI stuff takes me over the top for the Pixel 8 Pro. Let me know what you think though in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. Guys, subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.